get started let's go uh, another great game is waiting for you so white pieces okay i guess you can get the names of the players here uh, actually and which is better so white uh, white uh, started with four five knight f3 and e just like i told you time out of defense uh, so uh, e6 after we play d4 this is absolute most active approach and the move c takes knight takes and here white actually black has two options knight goes to c6 or a6 knight c6 is time out of opening or some people uh call it pulse and defense and apart from that there is a possibility to go for uh, a6 which is can opening anyways after knight e4 uh, knight c6 knight c3 queen c7 here we go on the board at the moment we have time out of the idea of this opening is first of all this when this queen comes to c7 controls the e5 square it controls the center it wants to uh, support the bishop before and the third pressure and the c Right? And also queen on c7 in some positions. I want to show you like one of the basic tricks of this time and of defense opening. It's bishop e2, knight f6, castles, a6, and just when you think everything is so cool, you play f4, they take, and they play bishop c5. So this is one more reason for having this queen on c5, c7, and supporting this trick with a bishop c5. I was once even witness of one game where the guy who was performing and who was actually running a simul, he blundered this and he immediately said to kid, okay, it's a draw. And the kid started crying because the kid just won the quin. Uh, so you have all kinds of situations uh, in chess. Anyways, so after like uh, knight, knight c3, queen c7, uh, bishop goes to e3. Bishop goes to e3. It's one of the most popular, one of the most popular approaches lately here, and it's very similar uh, to the one uh, we just examined in previous game. So bishop goes to e3, and after that, now black has two options: knight f6, d6, or just a6. Typical. A time out of defense goes with either knight f6 or a6. And in this situation, uh, black went for knight f6. One of the main lines here for white is either knight db5 or f4. Remember, uh, in a couple of my students, this line with f4. And lately, this variation uh, scores great for white. I even played a game in Serbian League with a white piece. International master Ratan Chende fairly easy, uh, fairly easy one might be. Anyways, after knight f6, f4, threatening e5, and just like I told you, this game uh, is another typical approach how to break Scheveningen type of, but in completely different. Here, white goes and builds up a pawn chain, uh, stretched from e4, f4, sometimes even goes to g4, depending on circumstances uh, and after f4 black went for d6 and here white has once again three uh, different options for example bishop can go to e2 bishop can go to e2 and it's a classical seven ingen with short castle queen e1 queen g3 with or without a4 for white then another thing could be queen to go to f3 I remember when I studied that with Eric Hansen and he just crushed uh, some Serbian uh, I am, pretty good I am in, in a great style, Macedonia, back to 2013. And finally, there is a line called anti Scheveningen with a queen d2 here for white, queen d2, bishop e2, long castle, where white just goes for g4 and g5. In the game, uh, white went for queen f3. So 
after queen f3, what is this queen on f3 doing? In this? Uh, first of all, it opens up uh, long castle. Uh, so it vacates the d1 square and uh, opens up the back rank for long castle. Queen on f3 uh, gives a better support uh, on e4 pawn. Queen on f3 uh, supports g4 and g5. Pawn storm idea, pretty much typical on the side. And finally, Queen on F3 in some positions uh, wants to support the E5 breaking pawn uh, ideas by White. Just want to show you something. After Queen F3, A6 in the game was Bishop D3, Bishop E7, and here White can go uh, first Long Castle, which is like. Uh, more of more of like a double edge type of position and can go for a short castle. Uh, white went for a short castle. Um, white went in this game for a short castle, but this is completely different approach. You go for a long castle, and your main idea is to do a pawn storm with a g4 and g5. If you play short castle, then uh, you'll probably satisfy yourself with transposing your queen to either g3 or an h3 and support, actually drag your rooks to, uh, drag your rook from a1 to either d1 or e1 and support e5 at some point. Uh, remember, there was a beautiful game played uh, a year ago, way Yi was white and crushed somebody in a similar type of position. By the way, there is something very interesting. For example, this position can arise from one more opening. So for all of you who are just like club players and like to play Sicilians and would like to surprise their opponents, I'd like to show you another way of reaching this position. So let me show it to you. E4, C5, Knight F3, and they go for Knight C6. Here, uh, nowadays, the main option is bishop b5, but of course, for all these decades, the d4 was just the main line. Of course, it's still the main move. So d4, c takes, knight takes d4, win b6. Have you ever seen this variation? It's very interesting. Uh, Gravas, Grandmaster Gravas from Greece, uh, even wrote a book about this variation, and it's told, by, it's told after him. Uh, it gained some popularity and very interesting. Uh, this queen forcing the knight to commit itself. Are you going to take on c6? Are you going to move this knight back? Definitely cannot defend. So the knight goes back to b3, knight f6, knight c3, e6, bishop e3, queen c7, bishop d3, a6, f4, d6, queen f3, bishop e7, and here we go, we have the same position. I'd like to tell you, uh, if any of you uh, was wondering what could be the idea behind queen b6, well, we all know that the knight in Sicilians on d4 is usually a very strong piece. So that's why when black goes for queen b6 in this EG, uh, he's actually trying to get rid of the knight in this and uh, once you move this knight to b3 or just anywhere else but b3 is just the best piece uh, the best place for this knight uh, he he managed to put one of your pieces out of the center to put it more or less on the edge of the board and should be having a pretty pretty decent game with black pieces afterward usually people who play 10 opening of or Paulson opening, uh, then Scheveningen type of positions, they like to go occasionally with the queen b6, with the black. Anyways, uh, after, knight, uh, after in this game happened knight f3, e6, e4, uh, we're once again checking the order of moves from the game. And here, I'm once again repeating two completely different approaches by white. Long castle, which supports g4 and g5. And another plan, bishop d3 short castle, that is very typical for a queen b6 type of games. And this one. Okay, there is just one slight difference. In previous position, the knight was on b3, here is on d4, but 
a little bit uh, later about uh, flight defects. Anyways, into H1. Just like I pointed out earlier, uh, just like in positions where you make long castles and where it's always like more than good for you to have your uh, king on b1, in situations when you play short castle and you either put your, push your pawn to f3 or f4, you always have to put your king on h1. Not like you have to do it, but once again, just like we had in previous example with the long castle and king b1, we can apply the same rule. It is not going to harm yourself for sure, and it could be very useful <clears throat> on the other hand. So king goes to h1. This is more like measure of precaution. Uh, you don't want to be under check at some point along the diagonal g1, h7. And after you play king h1, uh you are also doing one more thing in some of these positions for example let let's just say you play rook a to e1 because at some point uh you're happy uh break in the center with e5 they can take on d4 they can play e5 and once you think that it's good because you can pin this piece they can play this move equalizing the game very easy and why just because you had this king on g1. If the king was eight, the king was on h1, you would now take by bishop on e5 and win the game in one minute. This is a very important subtlety in this type of games, and a very, very slight difference can produce very big uh, changing result. Uh, during. So like you see, king on g1 and king on h1, like completely another like cosmos. Anyways, uh, that's why uh, white in this game played the king one. Just like I said, measure of precautions. Whenever you play guys, long castle, put your king uh, in safety playing the king b1, very useful place. Whenever you play short castle, and when you have your pawns on f4 and f3, always, uh, more than a pleasant thing for you to put your king on h1. It's very, very helpful. Anyways, in this game, uh, black went for knight bishop d7. Uh, I just like to stop here and to pay a little bit of attention on b5. For example, this is the first di diagram for you tonight. b5, typical way of playing in such positions. Uh, they just want to follow up with the bishop b7 and attack white set. How would you react in this? Let's go. I'm checking the chat room. I'm waiting for your reactions. How would you play against white here? Your white. Just want to see uh, what would you go with. So let's have a look. So I'm waiting for your answers. In the meantime, uh, I'll just check my uh, chat room and what is happening there. I'm I'm actually expecting your answers in this position. In previous position, uh, it was very very interesting to attack with a pawn storm on the side, pushing those pawns f3, g4, and doing the English attack. Here it's completely different. You now just have to attack in a typical Scheveningen. So how do we usually break these positions? Scheveningen said, the guy whose name is Scheveningen here and who's watching this lesson, he said knight takes c6. Uh, Ledbury Chess said, what about e5, Maya? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. You do want to play e5 sometimes in these positions, but make sure when you play e5 to have your queen on g3. Uh, Louis Bass said a4 92 with the idea of rerouting towards the king side. Too slow. Too slow. And by the way, you wanted to play a4. You were supposed to play a4 before he did b4. He does b5, then your pawn either shouldn't move at all or you just have to move it to a3. You don't want to play the a4. Uh, finally, 
Uh, what else? Nikki, Nikki, Nikki Field said G4. Ledbridge says, aha, now he's correcting himself. Yagdal said A to A4. Uh, well, you guys have some interesting ideas. Arashiva said A. Why on earth would you play H3? I mean, <clears throat> you're even taking away square for the queen that can sometimes be very, very pleasant there. And finally, uh, yes, ah, queen to H3 makes more sense, but not in this situation because if queen goes to h3, they will take the knight and win the piece with e5. So watch out of these tricks. Watch out of these tricks as long as your knight stands on d4 and they have a possibility to take on d4 and to follow this up with knight e4 and e5. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm not seeing anything, uh, anything else, uh, but a couple of you uh also said that we should be playing for we should be we should be uh playing and going for e5 that's correct guys that's correct and that's what you want to do here you want to play fine in such position please notice that a rook on a8 and knight on c6 are potentially weak piece after they take the knight threatening the queen uh, and uh, giving up possible, actually giving us possibility to take. Don't ever do this. Don't ever do this. Don't be greedy because they will play bishop b7. And now they have two ways to uh, crush you so bad. You play queen a7. Uh, you're you're not going to play rook a8 because the queen is going to trap the knight. But of course you will just play. Oops, just a moment. Uh, after queen a7, you will just play bishop g2 and uh, kick this actually take this queen away from the game so this is not good and that's why white is supposed to play bishop takes after bishop takes d4 d takes e5 once again uh, we get a position where we could take in two ways some some players take by bishop uh, others take by pawn i prefer taking by pawn because this way I'm removing one of the main defenders in chess. That's knight. Knight around the king is always a great defensive piece. Also, when you capture an e5, playing f takes e5, you're opening uh, also the light square bishop and the attack on the e7. You're opening the f file, and you can still consider at some point, not now, taking on a8. Still, you can take here. Because queen a7 now uh, doesn't work uh, bishop g2 anymore because this bishop is hanging the queen. But now you can seriously play rook e8 and win the queen. So this one doesn't work. And uh, just taking, taking queen, taking, actually giving up queen for the rook is no good. I'd like to talk about these positions a little bit later. And... Um, a little, you know, just to talk about these positions more uh, later, because e5 usually turns out to be a weakness for white. So after like, so th this is this is practically very good position for for black. After knight d7, let's go, guys. It's your turn, and could you please uh, give me a way to carry on with the attack? Once you manage to get rid of the main uh, defending piece, it's the knight on f6. Knight on f6 was doing a great job being around the king, was defending the h7. Uh, it also controlled the center, controlling the squares e4 and d5. Uh, h5 for a queen sometimes, but now this knight on e7, and we definitely have to take advantage. Let's go. How would you continue in? So I'm waiting for your reactions. Bishop h7, bishop h7, bishop h7, bishop h7. Everybody said bishop h7. Have you ever heard of the Greek gift idea? Do you know in mythology what the bishop h7 actually, what the, in mythology, what the Greek gift is? From the film Troy and beautiful Helena. 
Uh, but basically, this position, we're not talking about that type of sacrifice. Uh, why would you give up bishop in the situation? Just, Tim, you haven't been following what I've been talking about, the queen takes a8. Bishop h7 doesn't work. King takes h7, queen h5, king g8, and all your attacking resources uh, are uh, just exhausted here. And basically, you can maybe try to use some rook lifting, playing rook to e1, defending the pawn, and using like this. But it's too artificial, and it's too, too I'd say, too optimistic. Uh, okay, it's not bishop h7. What else can you suggest in this? So take the rook. Help Monzad. So you, you're you one of the guys who uh, wasn't listening to me because I said that queen takes on a8. They play bishop b7, and if queen a7, they trap the queen, and queen is trapped. And if you give up the queen for the rook, this is not one of those positions where uh, two rooks are better than queen, because he will simply play g7 and eventually win the pawn on e5. At the same time, uh, I just have to I just have to say that bishop and b7 is doing a great job. Well, help Monzad, if you made a pizza, send it just a piece of your pizza here, man. I'm 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 hungry. So after knight d7, after knight d7, uh, queen to h3. We've been looking for this, and nobody suggested queen h3. So many of you suggested queen h5. No, you don't want to play queen h5 because if queen h5, they play g6 with a tempi. They play g6 with a tempi, and uh, they're not going to do. It. So after knight d7. You just play queen to h. Queen on h3 attacks the pawn on h7 and threatens checkmate. They have to play now. They have to play g6. Let's go. Once you created a weakness on e5, and once you decided to remove this knight uh, from the king's side, there is no way back. Now you have to put all your pieces into it. So 94, 94, and uh, this is this is uh, two exclam mark moves because if they take on uh, e5, I'll show you what happens. But if they played, for example, bishop e7, then you simply jump with this knight on f6, create weaknesses on the dark squares, and next you'll give checkmate queen h6, queen g7. It's a very typical way in Sicilians to attack, and we all know and we're all familiar with this kind of trick. After knight e4, knight e5. Let's go. Uh, let's go. How would you attack in this position? I want exactly, exactly, exactly the same uh, one of my games like this. My opponent took on e5. It was an IM. It was an IM from Serbia. I played queen g3, threatening this knight. And then when he played f6, let's go, guys. We have another diagram here for you. Tactics, white moves, and wins. Who's going to give me the move for it? Who's going to come up with solution? Who's not sleeping? Who's watching this carefully? And who wants to show off his tactical skills? Let's go. White moves and wins. This is my game against I am. Okay. So... Knight takes f6. Knight takes f6 if bishop takes bishop e5. And when the bishop takes, another piece back to a break uh, to break on the dark square. So after rook takes f6, bishop takes e5. They have to defend it. And once they defend it, you take. Play rook f1. And now another very nice move to actually play uh, queen e7, you play some queen f3, but basically uh, you're just you're just okay. If, if queen g7, then you can go with this move. But if queen e7, then you stack a bishop here and you're just winning. 
Uh, this is very typical way of attacking Scheveningen type of position. Somebody mentioned something and said there was uh, he didn't uh, he didn't find the fence after his move. Uh, what was your suggestion here? For just have to tell me what was your suggestion here. You just have to tell me. Uh, you just have to tell me what were we, what were you talking about? About which continuation here for what? But n never mind. You always go with Queen on H3, threatening checkmate, provoking witnesses with G6. By the way, they should never play H. They should never play H6 because you just you should probably defend your pawn with a tempi. When they de develop last piece, you just include another piece attack. Now h6 turns out to be weak, and once again, once again, you've got a decisive attack on the king's side. These are typical ideas and typical rook lifting. Ah, Terman oil. Okay, you suggested bishop h7 here, queen h5, and then you said rook f3, as far as I see, right? You said there is no defense. There is no defense against this one. Well, first of all, I can play f5. And uh, I don't see how are you going to attack. Uh, even if you play queen h3, uh, where the hell is the checkmate here? And, uh, you know, as, as, as long as I have the f7 escaping square, you're down a piece. I'll be, you know, I'll play bishop e7 and I'll finish you off very easily. Uh, make sure always and do the double check before you second it. It's a great gift idea, but in some completely different type of position. Uh, so after knight d7, queen h3, provoke weaknesses and go with your knight and try to attack. Okay, we're now going back to we're now going back to this game. By the way, if bishop b7 Knight f6, bishop f6, e6, f6, and e5. Uh, this was my game. This was my game. Once again, I have to show you my game. By the way, the game that I'm showing you and analyzing with you, it's not my game. Uh, but I had a game like this. So I'm just giving you and providing some analysis about these positions and from this opening. This is my game against Grandmaster Abramovich. We played some blitz. Here in Serbia, it was I call those uh, blitz games tournament blitz games because it was a serious blitz tournament, and this could be questioned even for Eric Hansen and for others. But what is White supposed to do? This is a beautiful move. Queen H6 doesn't work. Knight takes F6, and there is no mate. I came up with fantastic move. Uh, was 94 an idea instead of queen h3 with idea knight f6? That's how I beat Grandmaster Jukic with that idea 94 knight f6, but not in that position. Completely different type of situation. So, can anyone come up with the best move? Wow, Scheveningen came up with the best move. Congratulations, man. Rook a to e1. Beautiful. And after this, you now come with the rook on e7. That's what I played. That's what I played, and now when he moves his queen to c6, I took the knight away, and I played queen f6, and he didn't have knight anymore that could take the, the pawn on f6, so I checkmated the GM in a, in a very nice way. So, congratulations, you came up with rook a to e1, a very strong performance by uh, Scheveningen. I'd like to know what is your rating? What is your feeder rating? Do you have feeder rating? You're certainly around 2100, 2150. I'm just waiting for your answer. Well, I'm waiting for your answer. Uh, I just showed you how do we react if they play early B5. Uh, okay. So, uh, King H1. And now you saw what happens. If they play early b5 any early b5 uh any no 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 let bridge chess i'm actually 
Oh, come on, 1703 cannot be a rating. I mean, it's nothing for you. Uh, by the way, uh, he keeps providing really good moves and good analysis during the uh, during this game and even in previous. Anyways, after King H1, Bishop D7, way way better, way more solid, and he just develops his last minor piece for in wall wing uh, and uh, reacting in the center. What could be the idea behind Bishop D? Either taking on d4 and uh, transferring this bishop to c6 in order to attack the pawn on e4 and support some d5, or just to complete his development with minor pc and to play b5 and b4. Uh, nevertheless, we're, we're having a better game even after such move. But okay, for example, I'd stop here. I'd stop here and I'd like to ask you. Now you have some uh, basic ideas and you know fundamental way of uh, playing and organizing the attack with a white piece. Like I said, he wants to take on d4, he wants to play and to push this pawn to b5, he wants to open up the back rank. How would you continue here with white? What would you play? Give me some suggestions. By the way, it's really cold in here. Just give me a moment. Okay, I'm back. Uh, can I get better? So let's go. Uh, once again, oh, so many suggestions. E5. Uh, Altman Zod, you're not supposed to play E5 if the diagonal is not open, if the rook is not hanging, if the knight on C6 is not hanging. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, yes, E5 is bad. Uh, Shevin Ingen said A4 makes some sense. Yes, it does. It stops B5. Stops B5. And it's just one way of treating this position. There's another way. So you, you can treat these positions and play them in two ways. E4 to stop B5. It's a typical way to stop the Shevin Ingen counterattack by Black Cope with a B5. And you can play, and you can play uh, absolutely not paying any attention on the queen side and organizing and actually storming all your minor and heavy pieces on the king. I prefer, actually, I, I like both of these plans. For uh, these are very creative type of games, and you'll see what White did it. Uh, this is beautiful. Game. This is beautiful game. Uh, maybe even better than not maybe even better than previous one. Okay, we Shannon in previous one made a beautiful game. But this one you're gonna like a lot. Anyways, knight b3, e5, a4, and jumping Jackson and Prokofiev, they suggested some g4. John is pin 95. I guess he lost his nerves. And hey man, this is not a Texas hold'em. You're not supposed to lose your nerves. Knight d5 out of nowhere. Uh, g4, nothing. Yes, you get too excited. Um, okay. Uh, I keep waiting for your moves, but nobody, absolutely nobody, suggested the most logical. Nobody suggested the most logical move, and it's the rook a to e1. The only piece that wasn't developed, you were supposed to put it back into the game, and that's this. Many people would uh, go and would put this rook on d1. Uh, no, this rook belongs to because on e1 it supports e5. It supports e5 in a crucial move. b5. Just like I told you, you can play a4 to stop b5 at all costs, and you can allow b5, in which case you either allow b4 or just stop it by a3. Um, white played a3, rook ab8, and after rook ab8, 
why did he play rook e? He just wants to break along the b file, pushing the pawn b4. Uh, White's turn, he captured on c6 in order to drag with his queen, actually to drag his queen to h3. Couldn't play queen h3, to remember. Somebody during this lesson proposed this. And as long as you have that, this knight on d4 standing there, they can take on d4, they can play e5, attacking both. Queen on h3 and the bishop on d4. And then you'd lose your game on the spot. Just because of this, white was the one who took the knight first. And after bishop took, now he played and brought this queen to a. For the first time in this game, we have something very concrete. Uh, we've got something very concrete. And uh, slowly but surely, we're threatening and trying to do some e5 or knight d5 ideas. But black made a cold-blooded reaction and played rook f to d. Da -da -da -da. Once again, diagram for you. How would you continue? How would you continue? Very tempting moment of the game. Would you go for something that actually? Uh, I let you. I let you think of this position and tell me. What would you do here? White to move. So white almost ideally prepared all his attack. And now Nimzobo, Jumping Jackson, Ledbridge Chess, Who's Master, you all guys said E5. Uh, do you really think that I'd give you this position if the E5 was so easy? And uh, Sheveningen came up, also uh, the chair said e5, Brandaway said e5, Black Albino e5, Tratacescu, Bishop e3 to d4, okay, that makes sense. Uh, you all guys uh, got too excited and you thought it's so easy. e5 doesn't work. Believe it or not, it doesn't work. Because after d takes e5, f takes e5, queen e5. Let's, let's first have a look at uh, what um, what uh, Black Albino suggests. But rook takes f6. It doesn't work. And please remember, this is very typical defensive method of uh, playing Scheveningen type of game. You take by bishop, and you now open up the e7 square for your king. So after queen h7, this one, you don't have a checkmate because the king is escaping here. Queen is doing a great job on e5, controlling the c5, because you can't play bishop c5 in this. Finally, apart from this, probably most of you wonder, why not bishop f4 to win an exchange? Uh, it's a typical positional mistake that one can go for in such situations. Because queen h5, queen h5, knight h5, rook b8, bishop b8, and rook b8. Believe it or not, this position is slightly more preferable for black. Even though you're up an exchange, not a clear exchange. First of all, they have a pawn for the bishop, for the dark square bishop, which is important. Pawn and the dark square bishop for the rook. Second thing, they have four pawns against two, so pawn majority and the king. Third thing, they have a potentially b4 idea to react on the b file. Fourth thing, and probably, in my opinion, the most important thing, they have a bishop pair in return and as a compensation for uh, being down in exchange. Personally, I'd choose black pieces. Personally, I'd choose black pieces. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even uh, hesitate. I'd immediately say, I like to play. This is exactly flexibility of Sicilian defenses. You win an exchange, you get too excited, you play e5, everything looks so easy, and it's still not that good. So, Ledbury Chad said uh, freaking D, uh, e5, uh, sorry, Sicilians, because he's not able, not able to uh, 
simply conduct his attacking this way. And just because of that, uh, he's playing the first move d4. Good point. It's a good point for all of you who are pretty lazy to, to, to calculate a lot. Anyways, uh, I get more messages about some of these positions. So let's get started. This position, rook f to d8. If you play, and the game was bishop d2, but some of you suggested bishop d4 supporting e5. That's nice. So yeah, you do want to play. Uh, you do want to play <clears throat> e5, e1. Chile, you just have to prepare that well. You see, uh, why do you why do you go so wrong and why do you make this kind of mistake? You're actually uh, getting too excited. Everything is everything is ready. Everything is ready, and just one more move, one slight move to make. Uh, white played bishop d2, and somebody else said even bishop d4. Uh, just went for a premature e5, and instead of easily winning your game and maybe making a masterpiece, what white didn't in this game, you would just spoil your chances. In Let me be more specific. Bishop d2 happened in the game, going for e5 and weakening the h7 square. Pretty much obvious. Let's have a look what happens if bishop d4. It's a little bit different because when they play e5, uh, somebody said, and kept asking, why not e5 for black all the time? Yes, that's the point. And then after e f takes e5, d takes e5. Let's go, guys. Some of you should try to at least, okay, it, I'm not saying it's good for white, but at least there's something nice for white in this situation to be able to try to, to attack. How would you play? Let's go. This is very practical way of breaking black's position. Once again, I'm not saying I'm actually, I'm not saying this is good position for white. I even believe this is okay for black, but white has one very interesting move to carry on with attack. Let's go. I'm waiting. Give this diagram. I mean, puzzle to solve, tactics all the time. Kirkwood Chess subscribed for 15 months in a row. Oh my God. Congratulations and thank you for being with us. So, how would you play here? So, Knight D5. <clears throat> Eric Hansen's is a babe. Eric Hansen is a babe. Well, that's a good point. Uh, he said knight takes d5. Exactly. Hulk Manzar also said knight takes d5. Yes, exactly. Because if the knight takes d5, e takes d5, you're threatening both. Checkmate and the bishop. And you win on the spot. But the problem is they have bishop d5. And now if you take by e pawn, they will take by rook and they defend themselves. Because rook f6, Bishop opens up as usual, and you don't have check. Or, or if you play like bishop e5, queen takes, e takes, queen takes, and now the problem is uh, once you take on e7, once you take on e7, uh, you don't have anything. Uh, this is just more or less normal position, but it's black's turn, which definitely helps black a lot too solidify himself in this in this attack or if queen d5 rook f6 uh, there is a beautiful move here uh, now it's checkmate if you take by bishop queen h7 it's a checkmate but there is a beautiful defense and once again we have to point out Ledbridge chess made his point why should you go into all these complications why don't you and play against Sicilians? Why don't you just play first move d4? Queen takes d3. What a beautiful positional queen sacrifice. What a beautiful positional queen sack. Now the pawn has to take, and believe it or not, in this position, black like absolutely have no problems uh, in terms of equalizing the game, maybe even pushing for more. Believe it or not, you're down a queen, and you're defending yourself easily, maybe, and trying uh, to win this one. 
Yes. Win takes D3. Beautiful way. Beautiful defense by Black. And this just shows you how resourceful uh, these positions could be in terms of uh, defending and term, in terms of uh, just being creative uh, when, you, when you try to save your positions. Anyways, anyways, that's why a uh, player with a white piece is played the bishop d2. Uh, I'll reveal something. Let, let's just make a slight quiz here and just make a slight test. Uh, white pieces has one of the best American players and he's known as a very positional player, as a player with a great nerves. Uh, he's not playing like nerve-wracking games all the time. Uh, he knows his stuff and in the recently finished European Club Cup he made one of the best results on the second board. Uh, he played bishop d2 and he clearly, me. I need my chair. He, uh, he clearly goes for, uh, for e5. By the way, we just have to thank to a uh, new IM uh, Lafong. Thank you so much for supporting this. And uh, congratulations on your IM Norm. That's, that's, really, that's really nice. And we've been watching your games alive here. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So, Bishop D2, yes, it's Garakamsky, of course. Garakamsky is white. And uh, next, you know, Cross himself, he has one of the best players nowadays with a black piece and uh, the beautiful game what Gara did in this game. After he played Bishop D2, threatening E5. Yes, Lafong won an IM and uh, you had a chance to watch his games uh, I believe he won an I am Norm there, and you had a chance to watch and to be a witness of uh, his games in the in the third. Actually, he made a beautiful win in the last round. It was a nerve-wracking game. It was a very nice one. Uh, okay, after Bishop D2, White is threatening E5. So, Black played D5. Question for you. Once again, once again, we've got a question for you. What happens if black plays instead of e5? What happened in the game? What happens if in this situation just goes for e5? Oops, sorry. Uh, bishop d2, and he goes for e5. This is position for you. This is another diagram. Uh, who was just very careful during this lesson? He wouldn't miss the next move for white. Let's go. You have like 30 seconds to come up with the best move for white. Very typical in such situations. You take on e5, uh, it's like signing the death penalty. Just like I said, pack your stuff, go home, change the sport, and play cricket. If you play f5, do the same. But you've got something very, very nice. Uh, okay, let's go. I'm waiting for your reaction. White's turn. So, white to move. Knight d5, infinity 22, the chair 007, 95, uh, Eric Hansen is a babe, 95, exactly. Uh, you just want to play the 95, you just want to open up the diagonal for your bishop. Brendan Dway, yes, also, always 100 FC, rook f3, or 95, yeah, so 95. You all the time, Want to open up the bishop on d3 and to attack potentially weak square on a. It's nice because if the bishop takes, what else? I mean, if the knight takes, then you're just uh, coming up with a checkmate or just winning a piece. So after bishop d5, a, e takes d5. Uh, now we have a very annoying threat. We have a very annoying threat. We want to take, let me show you. For example, they play something just to show you the idea. Oh, but just not this move. 
rib C8 free. You take, you take, sack the rook, you give check, and all good way of uh, winning such position, you just play like bishop before check. And for example, if the bishop comes here, then it's almost modern type of right? they, they would have to play rook to this. And now it's a different type of situation. It's still winning for what? Just a little bit different. You just have to take here, give check, and to satisfy yourself, not with a checkmate, but with a rook. Uh, anyways, this is a very typical trick. I know that trick from, from the dragon, for example, when I'm black with idiot. Um, here, we are now threatening to take on e5 and to do this trick. That's why they play e4. And now, try to, try to maintain with the attack on the king. Try to be very creative. Uh, don't look at the material uh, all the time. And uh, usually I like to say, try always in your game, satisfy yourselves uh, playing like uh, crazy, playing creative, and at the same time enjoying yourself in the game. So, what are you doing here? You are taking by rook on four. Beautiful uh, move not just because you're continuing with the attack and storming all your minor pieces but also after 94 bishop before you still defend the pawn on c2 if you took by bishop they would take and take on c2 and when you take on e7 they would take on d2 with slightly uh, better end game for black uh, because because of the activity there after rook takes e4 uh, knight takes, bishop takes, g6. Let's go, guys. Let's go. We have to attack. That's the point of this lesson. We don't want to play boring chess. We don't want to have games like in those for world championship matches. You know, uh, we just want to constantly keep uh, simply holding the initiative on the board and being able to attack all the time. So what do you want to play with you want to play f5. What's your plan? Let's just say they do something. Let's just say they do something. This is your plan. This reminds me on a game way you against somebody. And I've seen the following trick so many times in so many different type of Sicilians. Another diagram for you. And now I'm waiting for you to suggest a move for white. We're now just learning typical attacking and tactical patterns against the Scheveningen type of game. So it's white to move. Let's go. Who's going to say uh, a real solution? Who's going to be the first one? Win e6. Unfortunately, not. It looks tempting, but not. Wei Yi versus Brazon. Exactly. Eric Hansen is a babe helper. Exactly, that's the game. Way you present, exactly. And uh, Gaussian Eliminator said Rook F7. Congratulations. That's exactly the beautiful tactical trick. Uh, you're just uh, you're just forcing King to take, and actually you're doing some sort of decoying here. Then you take on H7, and after this, check this. Boom, checkmate. Or if the king goes, uh, or sorry, or if the king goes simply to uh, f8, bishop h6, checkmate. A beautiful operation between queen and two bishops. Uh, and uh, have you ever seen this trick, rook f7? Don't forget about this one. This was seen in one of the most beautiful games of the 2015 between Wei Yi and Brazil. Uh, after queen d7, you just play bishop c3, uh, and idea is obvious. You want to take on a g6 and take on h7 with checkmate. So this is nice, or, you know, you have like plenty of ideas. Anyways, Karakamski went for bishop d2, and his opponent 
uh, I can easily say his name because even if even if you know that Gata was white and you just find his games, find this opening, and you would realize that he played his game against one of the best world players nowadays. Another guy who made one of the best results in the European Club Cup, the one that I was commentating with Eric Hansen, uh, Shakriar Mamajara from Azerbaijan. So we're now uh, analyzing the games between Kamsky and Mamajara. So after d5, e5, knight e4, uh, you can't take. You actually fill this knight uh, very, very, as a, as a very strong piece. If you take, for example, an e4 uh, by bishop, then you're losing, you're losing the, the momentum for the attack. Uh, bishop is hanging, uh, rook on d8 is open, the bishop on c6 is open. He's going to even very easily give up the pawn on e4 just to open the lights for take by knight then you're losing a piece because you can defend both bishops at the same time uh, so what are you going to do Maya Fong uh, okay so after 94 it's white's turn guys we have to attack we have to attack so we're not supposed to take we're going to lose a piece what are we supposed to do Let's go. How would you continue in this position? Okay. So how should white continue in this position? Playing with white up actually after knight e4. So who would f5 the chair 007? He said, let's go for f5. The truth ICC, another guy who subscribed and going to keep joining us in the future months. So f5, exactly. Backing a piece. What's so strong about this? Uh, Mama Jarov captured. Uh, Mama Jarov captured. Didn't want to wait. Just, he's, he was just a piece up. Uh, you cannot, you know, very often say, that Garakamsky sacrifices any of his. So this is one of rare situations, but that doesn't mean that he is not good at tactics. He's probably only uh, trying to avoid that, that like nerve-wracking type of position where everything is just hanging. He's not like, for example, like Alexis Shirov. So Knight takes D2. He's more like laid back, easy going type of player who just likes to chill out a little bit more and play end games and calm position. Anyways, Garakamsky did f5 and he took an e6. He's sacking another piece. Uh, of course, you can't take an f1 because after queen h7, it's checkmate. So it threatens checkmate in one, but knight e4. He's now piece down. And after e takes f7, king h8, he had to find a way to continue. I hope that no one there uh, found the game and uh, no one is going to look at the diag actually the notation of the game. Hello, Trot ICC. So could you please give me a way to carry on with the attack for white? Let's go. Your turn. What do you have? You have two pawns for a piece in return for the attack. And looks like, uh, looks like your attacking resources are just simply are, are gone. So how would you carry on here? Let's go, it's your turn. Nimzo Bo asked me, what's wrong with F6 instead of F takes? Well, Nimzo, for example, I can play without any thinking. Without any thinking, I can just play g6. And then when you take, I'll take. And now I'm threatening your rook, you're going to move it. I put it back, and there is no attack for white. I kept talking about the bad pawn on e5. 
that's isolated pawn, that's clear weakness. I kept talking about it before, easy for black. Uh, and by the way, you cannot even take on e4 because black is the one who comes up with check. Do you realize how tricky these positions are and how many times you can go wrong uh, unless you really, really calculate like so f takes e6, 94, takes f7, king h8. Let's go. Who would like to tell me how is white supposed to continue? By the way, some crazy, crazy uh, tactics is coming. Uh, this game finished in like 10 moves. So... I just chose these games for you. By the way, just to know next time when I show you and when I, when we do this lecture format, uh, I'll, I chose another great two games, how to crush the Sicilian type of position. And we basically have to check different type of, uh, different type of games by a modern chess player. Uh, certainly, my major playing black is one of the best world players Simply, simply guy who's very talented. He, he, he crushed everybody in that European Club Cup championship. So if he found a, if actually what am I trying to say is that if he had a better way to defend himself, I absolutely have no doubts that he would find, would uh, find that during the game. Anyways, let's have a look. Let's take a look at Knight D5, a beautiful piece. A beautiful piece sack. Uh, Kamsky was on the top of his uh, shape. So after like bishop takes d5, another crazy move. Rook takes or rook takes e4, and now if bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4. There are two moves. If you play like this, it's checkmate. And if you play g6, you can stop the checkmate with the queen h7. Beautiful continuation and beautiful way to, uh, to simply break his really serious defense here. Because and unless, unless you can come up with this 95, I don't see how is white going to uh, continue and to win this game. Anyways, play 95. Uh, bishop d5, rook takes e4, and uh, his opponent played g4. And what happened now was very interesting. He plays rook f4. What is he threatening here? Threatening to play, uh, for example, to, he's threatening to take on g6. Black has to play king g7. Now he plays e6. He wants to push the pawn up to f8, promote the queen, to play rook f7 and to play queen h7 checkmate. So, out of curiosity, to show you what happens, for example, he goes like this. This is the line I was talking about. This, you give check, you give check, and this is checkmate. So, he's threatening this idea. That's why a major plays rook f8. Now, Kamsky goes here. For the first time, threatens almost checkmate. Queen before. So now he has to overrule the dark square somehow and to give check to this king. Once he manages to check the king, it's checkmate. It's going to be mate. So bishop c5. Now he goes here. He threatens queen c3 checkmate. Black plays here. Queen c3 rolled by queen on c7. And now rook h4. Now white wants to play queen d2. Followed by queen h6, checkmate. A major plays bishop e7. And another beautiful move plays queen to e3. What was the point of this? He's threatening checkmate in one. Queen h7, actually in two. Queen h6, queen h7. But the thing is, if he plays, for example, for example, bishop h4, check. The only move is here, check. Thank you for the excellent the education only move is here, and stream check. by M. Mio and all at Chess Bros. Winking face. 
Johnny Spin, thank you so much for your donation. We appreciate and we'll use this money to improve uh, our our site and everything what we're doing here. So after Queen F6, King H6, and of course, all you have to do here is just to bring your rook checkmate and it would probably have to uh, give up the queen. Uh, then you come up with another check and you know, this is like a zigzag maneuver. You're just taking and picking up everything. Uh, this would be a would be very nice finish of the game, but actually even more beautiful one happened. So, uh, h5, h5, and once again, I'd like to stop here because this was almost the very end of this game. So let's go. Let's get started. Uh, find the decisive tactics for this game. White makes a move and wins in a beautiful way. And he really crushed Mama Charvin. I'm I'm enjoying this. Okay, uh, we're now looking for tactics. We're analyzing the game between Kamsky and Mamajar uh, that was uh, played in Ramza back to 2013. Uh, Kamsky playing white, Mamajar playing black. Uh, in this lesson, we're just doing how to size initiative and to break players who simply go for Sicilian with a black piece. In first game, we've been analyzing the game between Anand and Jubojevic. Just had a chance to see uh, how is one supposed to play uh, with the English type of attack position. And here, we're just checking how to attack and how to break the Chevening type of game. Anyways, so many of you said Queen H4, somebody said Queen D4. Uh, so many different solutions, but basically, yes, perhaps queen d4, but then king six, and then what happens? Queen d4, queen h6, looks like Mama Jarov is going to save himself there. Okay, I won't give you more time than this. Uh, white went for a queen d4. Beautiful check. Not because uh, because of the check, actually, it's because of uh, simply outstanding rook sacrifice, rook take five. This is fantastic. This one again, because if you play king h5, then he would win the bishop and go with rook queen on e4, and unbelievable, the pawn on g6 cannot be defended, and. Uh, do you know what is even more beautiful here? If you defend this rook, if you defend this pawn by rook, then he goes with the rook using the rook lifting and uh, coming up with the checkmate. So you don't even want to take the material, you're just mating your fantastic game by Garakamski. Uh, I'm always enjoying his games, but this is certainly one of his best. So after g takes h5, he played rook f6, king g5, and um, checkmate. Uh, well, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Actually, this lecture that Chesbra uh, made for you, and uh, I hope the people on chess.com enjoy it as well. For the first time, uh, we've been embedded uh, during the Chesbra stream on chess.com. Uh, you might want to take some time to replay these analysis, to replay these games, to practice, to analyze a little bit more, and then to see if you'd like this format of lecture. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, if you do, if you do want to do that, uh, you'll be able to see this lesson on Chessbra site. You'll be able to see this lecture on YouTube. Uh, by the way, I'd like to tell you something. Uh, 
uh, we'll do these lessons mostly twice in a, twice a week. Once I'll provide strat strategy and some uh, typical strategical things, just like we did it today. Okay, those very interesting games with a water, a lot of beautiful sacrifices. Uh, but there will be topics like IQP, like hanging pawns, like pawn majority, and the other thing. Uh, I'd like to remind you that another uh, lesson, this lecture format is divided in two types of lessons. Once we talk about the strategy, another uh, lesson will be lessons about opening. Uh, I'm considered to be uh, pretty good for openings and I'll teach you a lot of different openings. Please let me know what would you like to have in our lectures. Uh, for example, I got already a couple of requests for the next couple of theoretical lessons. I'll gladly fulfill all your wishes and requests. Uh, my uh, either write to uh, write me here on uh, chess.com. My nickname is the Butcher, or just send me an email on the Mayadrag uh, per, Mayadrag uh, at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to send me anything you like. Uh, most